The Godzilla franchise has spawned dozens upon dozens of different kaiju that have offered up a fight to the oversized lizard over his 70 years of films. Naturally, you have the all-stars like King Ghidorah, Mechagodzilla, and my personal favorite, Mothra, but one monster that's an incredibly close second for me is also one that's often overlooked by the community, and rarely given the respect he deserves. I speak of none other than the myth, the bug, the legend, Megalon. Debuting in 1973's Godzilla vs. Megalon, the gargantuan beetle-like kaiju has yet to appear in another theatrically released film. He's appeared in numerous comics and video games, and even a recent short film on the official Godzilla channel, but he's generally been seen as a relatively unimportant character in comparison to his peers, commonly being overshadowed by his partner in crime, Gigan. Despite all the knocks against the guy, I can't help but love him. What can I say? I like rooting for the underdog, which is exactly why I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes of my life convincing each and every one of you as to why Megalon is awesome. Before we delve into his notable appearances, I think it's important to establish how this big bug was created in the first place. Megalon was originally conceptualized as a monster named Gabara and had a design inspired by that of a mole cricket. He would have served as the main antagonist of 1969's All Monsters Attack before the design was drastically changed into the troll-like abomination that is Gabara. Thankfully, the original insect-based design was brought back during production of the cancelled 1972 film Godzilla vs. the Space Monsters Earth Defense Directive, and it was also where Megalon got his name. When designing him for Godzilla vs. Megalon, special effects director Teriyoshi Nakano originally wanted the kaiju to be a monstrous dragonfly, but ultimately shifted gears to a creature most prominently based on the Japanese rhinoceros beetle. However, the designers wanted to make him a smorgasbord of various bugs, so in addition to the beetle-inspired head, they gave him a cicada-like body and wanted to have him move around via jumping like that of a grasshopper. By some holy miracle, this unique amalgamation paid off because I think Megalon's suit is one of, if not the single best-looking suit in the entire Showa era of Godzilla. Now that we have his conception out of the way, let's finally explore what makes this beetle badass. In the film, Megalon is an ancient monster who fights for the Seatopians, an ancient race of humanity who ruled the Earth before the rest of mankind. Unfortunately, their kingdom fell into the ocean hundreds of years ago. Despite this setback, they managed to thrive, until the surface people started causing too much ruckus with their newfangled nuclear weapons. Eventually, in the 70s, the Seatopians had enough of their garbage and called upon their guardian monster Megalon to teach the surface humans a lesson. Being led by the nearly as amazing Jet Jaguar, Megalon arrives at the surface and immediately starts blowing up Tokyo, demonstrating his unique abilities upon its populace. His most obvious weapon is his drill arms, which can be used to dig right through anything that stands in his path, whether that be the terrain to quickly disappear and reappear from sight, or for tearing right through his foes. And if that all doesn't work, he can always just ram straight into other kaiju with his lethally sharp horn. Not enough for ya? Well don't worry, because this powerhouse has the ability to shoot the Beast Killer Light Ray from his horn, which is so powerful that it can even melt tanks. Just ignore that they use stock footage of King Ghidorah when he does that. He also has the ability to shoot concentrated globs of geothermal napalm that will set fire to anything it makes contact with, including himself. Not his best moment to be honest. These ranged options are made even more deadly when he's airborne, and while plenty of other monsters like Mothra, Rodan, and Ghidorah can fly, they need to flap their wings to get any height while my boy Megalon is so epic that he tosses the rules of physics right out the window and hovers through the air without a care. Thanks Megalon, I hated my physics class in high school. But none of that compares to his single most powerful skill. His hops, baby! This bug's jumping abilities are unparalleled, and I have no doubt in my mind that Megalon would destroy Charles Barkley in Kaiju Basketball, something not even Godzilla could accomplish. Yeah, so take that, power scalers! Megalon is more powerful than the supposed king of the monsters. My friend and I laughed our asses off every time he demonstrated this fantabulous power, given he has no issues walking, flying, digging, and swimming, but clearly he knows that the fastest way to get the point A to B is by playing imaginary leapfrog. I guess you gotta show off the grasshopper influence somehow. Ironically, this goofy action was actually a nightmare to perform since Megalon's suit was the heaviest ever designed by Toho at that point, making it an incredibly taxing effort on both the special effects crew and suit actor Hideo Date. Eventually, they settled it by hoisting him up and down with cables, so they didn't have to cut out the entire idea. With these powerful abilities in his arsenal, he quickly lays siege to Tokyo, and the Seatopians planned on using him for more chaos until his robot guy Jet Jaguar was brought back to human control by his creator, Goro Ubuki. 
From here, Megalon's former friend turns into his fearsome nemesis, and they engage in a duel. It's a tough fight for Megalon, since he's been dormant for thousands of years and has to deal with the trauma of fighting a machine he once believed to be his best pal. Thankfully, Megalon has another friend that's a lot more supportive in the form of Gigan. This cybernetic insect with a saw fur chest is surprisingly kind towards Megalon, and the two teach the Ultraman wannabe who's boss. Unfortunately, the fun is spoiled when Godzilla shows his ugly face and beats up Gigan, forcing him to retreat while Megalon suffers the almighty dropkick. Even though he lost, it still took two kinds to take him down, and he survived both of the devastating kicks before he accidentally knocked himself out with his own napalm. Megalon made a valiant effort with his pal Gigan, but the two simply had too much fun during the fight, which is probably Megalon's one flaw as a fighter. He's too cocky in battle and prefers to torment his opponents rather than just finishing them off. And listen, that's metal as hell, but not an efficient tactic for kaiju battles. It was sad seeing Megalon go down, especially since I interpreted the film as a tragic tale. We can all joke about the film and its complete absurdity all we want. But looking deeper reveals the true narrative the cinematic masterpiece is trying to tell us. Megalon is secretly the hero in this story. The Seatopians have been living underwater in peace for centuries until their home was ravaged by the humans' careless misuse of nuclear weapons. With no other choice, they send Megalon as their last hope in saving their home from the massacre. It could be viewed as cruel to send the big monstrous bug to devastate the surface, but nothing he can do will match the horrors of which the Cetopians have suffered by the hands of humanity. In the end, Megalon fought with unflinching courage to protect his people, and was unfairly annihilated by the very creature humanity's recklessness created. Megalon was not a monster. He was a protector of the Earth itself, by protecting the life that humanity was threatening, and for that, he deserves our sincerest gratitude for the duty he tried to serve. Just, uh, don't apply any of that to the comic book adaptation of the film, because in that one he acts on his own accord for the reasoning of energy hunger. The comic is pretty sweet though, giving a great look at just how destructive the beetle can be when he lets loose. Gets absolutely brutalized by Godzilla in this version though, having his spine bitten in half by a particularly vicious version of the overgrown reptile. Despite the profound hidden symbolism, Godzilla vs. Megalon failed to win over audiences and the film was a complete bomb cursing Jet Jaguar and Megalon into the depths of obscurity for decades. Both would show up in the Godzilla Island TV show, which ran from 1997 to 1998, and Megalon scored 38 episode appearances. But this show depicted all the monster action exclusively in toy form, so it just wasn't the same. He does become friends with Desatoya, though, which is one of the coolest kaiju team-ups ever conceived. All of this disrespect changed in 2023, as this was when Megalon made his glorious comeback to stardom. Starting off small, the kaiju was finally introduced in puppet form on the web series Godziban in its final two episodes, being put to the test by the three Godzilla brothers to make the ultimate kaiju destruction scene. Or at least that's what I gather given there's no subtitled version of this episode. It almost acts like a mini retelling of the original 1973 film with him teaming up with Gigan to take down Jet Jaguar. And while they are beaten, it's all just an act, as we all know Megalon could solo everyone on the show if he wanted to. The more substantial media to come out this year was the phenomenal short film titled Godzilla vs. Megalon 2023. The film is a sequel to the previous year's Godzilla vs. Gigan Rex, and both short films were directed by Takuya Uneshi, and the latter was made to commemorate Megalon's 50th anniversary. And thank you so much for doing that, Uneshi. About time someone gave the colossal cicada the respect he deserves. The film begins with a girl who is presumably Cetopian awakening Megalon through the help of Gigan Rex's corpse, a nice nod to their original friendship back in 73, and the kaiju wastes no time in finding Godzilla to show him who's the true king. Megalon has been given the final wars treatment in regards to his redesign and looks sinister as hell. His frame is bigger and more imposing than ever, with his eyes angled in such a way that makes him look vicious yet sophisticated. One look into his eyes is all you need to recognize the smug confidence this iteration of Megalon carries with him. Even cooler, he not only retains the yellow splotches on his wings of his old design, but they spread out significantly further out, making them somewhat resemble the Japanese rhinoceros beetle's actual wingspan. His balls of geothermal napalm now resemble flaming daggers that can obliterate a tank with just one shot. And his beast killer light ray is more lethal than ever, being able to stun the durable gemstone Gojira so they'd be defenseless against his flying drill punch. 
The two duke it out in a brutal fight that makes the original films look like a pillow fight in comparison. By the end, Tokyo is nothing but a pile of rubble, and despite Megalon's amazing new upgrades and killer look, he's once again bested by the big G. Still survived another dropkick though, so mad props for that. But you know what? If this stupid lizard didn't have this new atomic energy relocation power to charge up his attacks, Megalon would have slept the floor with him. Jokes aside, this short film expertly showcases that a goofy character like Megalon can be turned into something truly threatening, and thanks to the short film, he's a character I can love for his comical silliness and his straight badassery. If you haven't seen Godzilla vs. Megalon 2023 already, then you haven't lived a fulfilling life, and should probably rectify that by going into the description below and clicking on the link to it. Trust me, you won't regret it. It's no secret that only two film appearances and a handful of starring roles in kids shows isn't exactly an impressive filmography for 50 years of being in the showbiz. Thankfully, Megalon has wound up in various Godzilla games over the decades and has amassed an impressive arsenal of starring credits, whether he's an enemy, cameo, or playable character. Megalon even has the honor of being the very first monster besides Godzilla to be encountered in an official title based on the franchise. 1984's Godzilla vs. Three Giant Monsters for the Microsoft MSX computer sees the titanic Coleoptera attempting to kill Godzilla by digging holes around him and sneaking up behind before the player can fire off an atomic blast. Very primitive for sure, but at least his presence in this classic game gives him bragging rights over the likes of more popular monsters like Mothra and Rodan, who didn't make the cut for the game. 20 years after his film, the 1993 Godzilla arcade game would mark his playable debut in this old-timey fighting game. Although one of the developers screwed up big time and misspelled his name as McGarren, and yes, I am pissed about that. Regardless, this game allowed the world to unleash Megalon's awesome powers against their friends, and I can only imagine how incredible it must have felt to experience it back when the game first came out. He would continue to appear as a playable monster in three more Godzilla fighting games released between 1993 and 1994, with the exception of the Game Boy's Godzilla King of the Monsters. Following this, he would appear in some of the strangest Godzilla games ever made. Like the educational Sega Pico title Godzilla Heart Pounding Monster Island, where he's seen bullying the shit out of Manila, which gives me yet another reason to love Megalon. Weirder There Still is the PS1 exclusive of Godzilla Trading Battle, which sees players using a massive selection of Toho monsters in the form of trading cards, a la stuff like Pokemon TGC or Yu-Gi-Oh. This one just makes me feel bad for Megalon whenever he's hit. Poor dude is terrified. All these odd games are great and all, but the game that truly showed off what Megalon was capable of was the all-time 2002 kaiju classic, Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee. This epic 3D fighter allows you to play as the big bad bug in charge right off the bat, because the developers over at Pipeworks knew people couldn't handle the idea of having to unlock Megalon, because why not just give everyone's favorite character right out the gates? He's the blast to play as with his unique ability to tunnel underground and drill spinning opponents above your head never grows tiresome. Plus, some moves like his block and flying double drill dive have identical animations to that of the 1993 arcade game. Kinda makes the two feel connected in a way, which is pretty cool. Even better, he retains his starting roster status for both of the game's sequels, Godzilla Save the Earth and Godzilla Unleashed, where he continued to be one of the sickest characters to play as. Although I do find it funny that in Unleashed he's a part of the alien faction of the game's monsters, because Megalon is of Earth. But he knows not to associate with the Earth Defenders because he's probably aware that the humans are dicks and that the alien race of the Vortac are probably better masters for the planet anyways. Plus his best buddy Gigan is an alien and you can't break up the dynamic duo. Even though he made a name for himself in what are debatably the best Godzilla games ever made, he didn't feature in anything of note after this. Although to be fair, we really haven't gotten any Godzilla games since 2014, besides a bunch of mobile games. Still makes me mad he wasn't even considered for Godzilla PS4. Think of how cool it would have been to relive the iconic fight against Jet Jaguar, but in glorious HD. But no, those bastards at Namco had to crush my hopes and dreams to fuel their elongated egos. And then out of nowhere on January 30th, 2024, a Godzilla DLC was released for Minecraft Bedrock Edition that featured a blocky Megalon as an enemy monster in the DLC's wave-based battle mode. It's genuinely surreal to see an official Megalon in Minecraft of all things, but hey, I'm not complaining. I'm just glad to see my main bug man continue to get representation in video games even as recent as the current year. The Godzilla anime trilogy was lacking for many people, and even though I'm somebody who actually enjoyed it, I can't help but agree with others that the backstory of the trilogy is far more interesting than that of the actual films. One of the reasons is that Megalon has a surprisingly threatening role in the trilogy's two prequel novels. 
First appearing in the world in 2012, the gargantuan grasshopper laid waste to the nations on the west coast of Africa, sending millions of people to find refuge in Europe. And then 10 years later, he returned to finish the job on the rest of the continent by annihilating the South African Republic to the point where he was responsible for destroying half of the landmass's population. Reading this badass interpretation of the character just makes me wish that we could get more films or even a show set in the past of this universe because seeing Megalon effortlessly take over Africa would make for a terrifying watch and show off why he's not to be messed with. His reign of terror continued into 2029, further eliminating nations such as Pakistan, India, and the Philippines before making his last stop the familiar stopping grounds of Japan. Unfortunately, King Caesar of all kinds was the one to finally end Megalon's power trip when he somehow manages to kill the King of the Bugs. Talk about a lame way to go out. I'm sorry, but King Caesar is such a lousy monster, and he's nowhere near Megalon's level. I call BS on this conflict, and I'm just gonna pretend that Caesar had divine help from Mothra, because there's no way in hell I'm gonna sit here and let my main bug man Megalon get disrespected like this. Outside of the anime novels, he's shown up physically in seven separate Godzilla comic series from 1976 to just last year in 2023. His importance in each comic varies, and he's oftentimes written to be canon fodder kaiju to Godzilla like in 1992's Godzilla King of the Monsters. Admittedly, Megalon brings his A-game here and severely wounds the Big G, having the upper hand until he gets too cocky and kills his best buddy Biollante by accident. Speaking of buddies, Megalon is reunited with Gigan in 2016's Godzilla Rage Against Time, where the two begin their takeover of 13th century Japan under the control of the M Space Hunter Nebula aliens. The same ones from Godzilla vs. Megalon's direct predecessor, Godzilla vs. Gigan. But of course, party pooper Godzilla ruins their fun and once again relies on the help of humans to give him the upper hand on the monsters who are clearly more skilled at fighting. Try fighting fair and square, you honorless reptile. Things get worse in the 2014 series, Rulers of Earth, because that bastard, King Caesar is back and beats Megalon again. God, I hate this guy! I get you're jealous that you'll never be able to hit the gritty like Megalon can, but you want to show the titanic insect the respect he deserves. But don't worry, because Megalon would get another shot at global conquest in the form of the crossover comic with the fucking Power Rangers. Introduced in the first issue, the gritty master wastes no time picking a fight with Godzilla, who dispatches him with relative ease. But I blame his loss on the Zillions! They summon him to fight the radioactive lizard without proper prep time. Learn how to prepare for a battle, you bucket-headed idiots! The most recent comic he showed up in is the one I actually have physically. It's part of the Godzilla Rival series and sees Megalon having his long-awaited rematch with his old nemesis, Jet Jaguar. The two rivals participate in a climactic fight in downtown San Francisco, and Jaguar absolutely wipes the floor with him. That's it. I'm sick and tired of them not giving Megalon the respect he deserves. My poor beetle can't get a single W over here. Whenever he starts going on a power trip, some dick always has to come in and ruin it. Maybe one of these days he'll star in something where he actually gets to be the ultimate victor. Spending this time researching Megalon has taught me that the reason I love him so much is because I kind of feel bad for him. He's been shafted in terms of film appearances, usually gets the short end of the stick in every fight he's been in, and rarely has opportunities to demonstrate how powerful he really is. But when he does get to show what he's made of, he becomes one of the most fascinating and unique monsters on the block, exuding charisma and charm to a degree that his peers can never hope to match. Besides, I think the age of Megalon is near. The 2023 short film was only the beginning of Megalon's triumphant return, and I have no doubt that his return to the big screen will be in the very near future. Perhaps he'll even be Godzilla's foe in the hypothetical Minus One sequel. But before I end things off, I think a little bit of redemption is in order, because I'm gonna make sure Megalon gets his payback against all the kaiju that have wronged him over the course of his life. Let the battles begin!